Hi, good morning. Welcome to the Pulse Shift News and the Mavstar Observatory. Guys, a little bit later on in the video, we're going to get into looking at jet streams, Arctic climates over the northern and southern hemispheres of this Earth and try and explain why you know we are seeing these flash floods happen um, in the US like we have recently and you know these severe cold temperatures. I believe that there is a link um, with the magnetic poles and the jet streams and I think that, that has been um, definitely influenced over the last 30 years as the magnetic pole has begun to pick up uh, over that space of time covering more distance in less time. Um, so yeah before we do I want to thank uh, as I always do those people that are watching our back over here at the Mavstar Observatory and you know making a small contribution here and there either on PayPal or on the patrons you know I want to make sure that one of the first things we ever do on this video before or any video before we get started is just say thanks to those people and you know I know other people are doing their little bit as well by sharing this on Twitter Facebook and other uh, media outlets like that so let's get on with it guys one other thing I just quickly want to add is you may have experienced a few technical problems uh, watching videos uh, early this morning in the UK time or GMT and what had happened is we'd lost completely every video that we'd done all 400 of them um, and the monetization and uh, a few other things but the channel was still live on YouTube not sure what happened uh, it was like that for about two hours and then come back up but just as a precaution what I've done is added some extra security now we've changed all the passwords and codes now it's all phone verification before anything's allowed to be changed on the channel just in case it is hacked but was a bit strange guys um, I thought I was being shown the door by YouTube but it, it didn't uh, it didn't seem to be the case obviously when the videos come back on but there was no explanation as to why they disappeared in the first place so you know we have got the backup website if anything ever happens and we will um, if we do lose YouTube at some point in the future you know we can uh, direct you to another um, source of where we can upload some videos uh, from the website so that's our backup if anything should ever happen okay let's get on with it then so let's get on with it. Uh, before we do, um, I just want to mention that if I use my cursor to point out what I'm talking about on this map, it's going to be very difficult uh, for when it gets uploaded onto YouTube for it to be synced at the same time. That's why I try not to use cursors um, whilst talking because, I, as I've noticed, the cursor is always somewhere else whilst I'm talking about a specific thing. But you can see the jet stream, which is that coloured region all around the Arctic Circle at the moment. And, you know, I'll get into why we end up with these flash floods. And, you know, more importantly, I think that these jet streams over the polar regions are being governed in some way by the magnetic poles over those regions. Another thing I just want to briefly mention is, you know, when we see organisations measuring the actual ice content over the north and southern hemispheres, uh, especially more so with the northern hemisphere, I wonder if they take into account the actual landmass accumulation of snow and ice uh, that is, you know, building up over the Siberian region at the moment. Because what I believe is is that the jet streams are moving along with the magnetic pole, and you know, I don't, you know, I've said it many times. That's why I believe, you know, that these two are in the same location. Another reason that seems to support that is, you know, what we was talking about in the last video with temperature favouring, you know, magnetic um, intensity. And absolutely is the case, you know, we've got a cold climate which supports magnetic intensity over a region where the magnetic poles are. If we look at the equator, there's no magnetic pole there and the temperature is much warmer. Um, what I was saying about the Arctic ice pack is it might be increasing but not so much on the ice and that's probably why they don't add that or haven't started adding that to you know the sea ice uh, concentration maps that we've got on the website for you to see that are being supplied by these companies but if what I'm saying is absolutely right and the Arctic climate is moving along with the magnetic field over the northern hemisphere Siberia will be experiencing more and more um, 
you know, snow and ice build up on land because there simply, as you can see, isn't no more ocean for it to build up on. Um, the other thing is, is we've got a few things uh, that are all connected. Uh, we've got a grand solar minimum and that can increase the amount of rainfall simply by, you know, over the last 33 years, the sunspots and activity of the sun has been decaying uh, to this all time low. Uh, if you look at the charts on you know the solar data that we've got on the website, you can see that the char disappears almost exponentially. And you know with a low um, powered sun at this present time, you know our heliosphere, which is like an invisible bubble, a bit like the Earth's magnetic field or the magnetosphere that protects the Earth, but actually protects the whole of our solar system. So if the sun's output is low, the heliosphere begins to shrink and that in turn allows more cosmic radiation in. If we just set that aside and then concentrate on the Earth's magnetic poles moving and the fact that we've already had a weakening of the magnetosphere by 20% 20, 20 or thereabouts or maybe a bit more now, you could uh, factor in the fact that we are going to get a compiling um, problem with cosmic radiation. And we know that cosmic radiation is linked to cloud nuclei and seeding and therefore more water being in the atmosphere as a result of that. If you also then um, factor in the fact that the magnetic poles may be regulating the jet streams and over the last 20 years we've seen some dramatic changes with those jet streams then you know it stands to reason that if this arctic air starts to go lower down uh, the territories of America Canada and places like that and mixes with the warm air as we're seeing more frequently now with the, the polar jet streams and the subtropical jet streams we're going to get precipitation and it's going to dump it if we're having cold air come from the Arctic down into the lower regions where are usually uh, you know more stable but they're not because of the you know the big sways now or the, the big dips um, in the in the actual jet streams you know it's going to drag that cold air down it's going to meet warm air and what's going to happen simply it's going to precipitate as water and if we have more cloud nuclei such as cosmic radiation possibly mixing with aerosols forming bigger molecules therefore creating a situation where we get cloud seeding we're going to get more precipitation again as a result and this can have the adverse effect you know we can get equally you know these troughs bring up you know that subtropical uh, warm air as soon as it clashes with the arctic air or you know regions of this earth that are higher in latitude we're going to get precipitation falling as snow in them regions and when we start to see these big dips in the jet streams you know leaning over you know the south china islands um, at certain parts of the year the, you know because obviously we have to counter in also you know the tilt uh, on our orbit around the sun which is what gives us our seasons and our winters we have to also factor in that as a you know something that can have effects on the climate and the jet streams but you know we're going to get you know as we have seen sub-zero temperatures on continents uh, around this world that don't usually experience those temperatures and it's going to be you know like we are seeing record-breaking um, you know climate in these regions you know about a year and a half ago two years ago now we saw China experience that in those southern islands and as a result you know thousands and thousands of heads of cattle was lost and you know hundreds of thousands of hectares of uh, grain was lost as well staples and you know this has a big effect on everything so you know I just wanted to you know give you a few of my thoughts as to what's taking place on this planet as a result directly of the poles migrating and you know just try and give you guys a bit of understanding as to why it's hard to actually you know pinpoint you know the exact cause and the exact knock-on effect the only thing we can do is just continue to monitor them as best we can and hopefully we will end up with a model that we can you know use to predict what is going to happen in the months to come with you know those jet streams moving into those regions at that time but the problem is 
is that these things are changing too quickly and you know we, I've discussed this now a couple of times um, in videos you know they change that frequently that even pilots by the time they get you know the forecasts and they're in the air they've already changed so this is what we're having to deal with this is why you know companies that produce seeds that are specifically modified for specific climates and predicted climates get it wrong so fast and as a result you know we see people from India and other parts of the world you know doing what we've saw you know committing suicide as a result of losing you know their farms which they secured on you know loans to buy the grain to put in the ground that was modified for the climate that was predicted and the climate changed as a result they lost these lands that had been in their families for hundreds of years and you know resulted in them taking them lives this is a serious um you know topic guys and it's only going to continue getting worse throughout the next five to seven years and then we could see you know another 30 years before things you know almost subside back to normal if we do get the reversal during that period of time because let's face it it has taken a hundred years to get to this stage and I do believe that we are in the final stages of the reversal right at this point in time that's why I predict five to seven years before we go into the weak field lines and we get the reversal I think we can expect uh, an increase in what we've already seen only perhaps on a more dramatic scale uh, I can see the jet streams breaking down completely uh, during that magnetic reversal I can see um, you know the South Atlantic anomaly increasing in size which is the weakest part of the Earth's magnetic field I definitely think that's a a region to focus on in the coming years uh, because the more that increases the more likely we are to see the reversal and the other thing is you know we're going to start to see the magnetosphere weaken more and the pole move into those weak field lines I mean we're about 350 miles away from that 40 degree marker where at that point we should see uh, the pole move into the weak field lines and then get the reversal from that point on but it's going to take probably another hundred years from the reversal for things to start to stabilize we we can't predict guys where the poles are going to be back on this earth but if we're right about the predictions that we've made so far wherever the poles do end up will be probably the new arctic and antarctic um you know regions on our planet as a result and then of course there is the other anomaly that's over in the uh, northern and southern hemispheres of this planet and that's the rotational axis but things have been stable with regards to that for the last 8,000 years and it's very easy to check during the summer and winter solstice to see at what altitude the sun rises on that specific day and just compare it but I will say we do have monuments which could be even older than 6,000 years, even even here in the UK, such as Stonehenge, which align themselves up perfectly with the solstices. And that's why I say, at this point in time, I don't think that we are seeing a uh, rotational axis shift. But if that did happen, it would be only adding to the uh, significant impacts of not just climate, but shifting of the world's oceans. And, you know, guys, I do believe this this has happened in our in our past before uh, we have had great floods before we've had great droughts before and we've had extinction level events take place which we still to this day don't quite know why that is but you know we are in an all important time right now and I think it's largely due to the magnetic reversal so guys I'll leave it there. In a couple of days, um, I've texted a few uh, of our, uh, what do we call them, guardians of the galaxy or of the magnetic poles at least, uh, to you know do a data drop on their SD cards and get the files over to me. So in the next couple of days, we'll have that. Uh, around on and around about the 17th of the month, we're going to pull the SD card out of the TriMag system. Have a look at that. Have a look at the weakening of the magnetosphere if that is happening. And, um, you know, it's an interesting time right now because the last month's data was significant. We'd seen, you know, a gradual uptick in the behaviour of the magnetic North Pole and things look like they're starting to really get moving, guys. So I think it's interesting times. And, um, you know, the only other thing I can say is, you know, it's never been a more 
uh, appropriate time to get behind us and support us either on Patreon or the PayPal link that's down there. You know, we do a lot. And, you know, please go over to the website because we've got lots of these uh, charts that are updated every day, sometimes several times a day. And, you know, there's plenty of information out there with regards to all the anomalies that are taking place on our planet. So, guys, links down there if you want to help support us. Big thanks for those that do. And I'll catch up with you in the week. You take it easy. And as always, bye for now.